Hi everyone. Uh, I would like to read a book to you. It's not fine arts related necessarily, um, but it is a book that's meaningful to me and to my family. Um, I've had a practice of bringing a book home uh, to read to my daughters each night. And one of the first books that I brought home uh, was this book called Zen Shorts by John Muth. And um, I remember reading it to my daughter the first time, to Avi, my oldest daughter. And I remember that we both really enjoyed reading it. And it was kind of a special book. Uh, and I have reread it to my daughter several times. And I bought the book as well. I want to support the author. Um, but here at school, I thought I would do something different and I would read it to you uh, now. And I, I hope that you enjoy it. Um, it is perhaps geared more towards the primary students, but this book does have some messages in it that are applicable, I think, and valuable to folks of all ages. Um, and that's all I'll say about that. So hopefully you can see it okay. I'm gonna open it up like so. Check my camera here. Yeah, it looks like you can see it. Hello. All right, here we go. Zen Shorts by John Muth. All right, this says, this is the dedication, for Ballard Borich, the giant panda I've often found dancing on my porch. Okay. All right, we begin. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. A bear, he's really big, and he's in the backyard. Well, what's he doing, Michael asked. Uh, He's sitting, and he has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? By the time the boys got outside, their sister, Addie, was already talking with him. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself. Then Addie introduced Carl because Carl was shy around bears that he did not know. And this is how Addie, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. The next day, Addie went to have tea with Stillwater. Hello, Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, a faraway voice called. Then she heard the voice say, oh yes, come out, come out. Stillwater was in the backyard. He was in a tent. Is he okay? He was in a tent. This is a birthday present from my Uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much that I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Addie to sit with him. You brought me some cake, said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday? No, said Addie. Well, it's not mine either, said Stillwater. But let me give you a gift for my uncle's birthday. I will tell you a story. All right. Uncle Rye and the Moon. My Uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening, he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through a few of my, uh, through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice Uncle Rye, and when my uncle said hello, the robber was so startled he almost fell down. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome, how nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say. Because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed, he looked around the tiny hut for a gift to give the robber. But there was nothing to give. The robber began to back towards the door. He wanted to leave. At last, my Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered. Here, he said, please take this. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. He took the robe, dashed out the door, and escaped into the night. My uncle sat and looked at the moon. 
its silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Poor man, lamented my uncle. When you lament, it means you, you are sad. You're, you feel sorry for someone. Someone in this case, anyway. Poor man, lamented my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If only I could have given him this wonderful moon. Your uncle sounds nice, said Addy. I don't think I could have given away my only robe. Oh, I know how that is, said Stillwater. But there's always the moon. That was a good story, said Addy. Thank you, said Stillwater. And this is good cake. Thanks, said Addy. I made it myself. The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Can I come up? asked Michael. If you're careful, said Stillwater. What if we could fly? said Michael. We could cast shadows on the clouds, said Stillwater. But what if we fell? said Michael. Well, if we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. That would be bad, said Michael. Maybe, said Stillwater. Maybe, asked Michael. All right, now another small story within a story. The Farmer's Luck. There was once an old farmer who had worked for his crops. I'm sorry. There was once an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, they said sympathetically. Maybe, said the farmer. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, replied the farmer. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses, was thrown off, and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came to offer their sympathy on his misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, answered the farmer. The day after that, the military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight in a war. Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Maybe, said the farmer. Oh, I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Yes, said Stillwater. Yes, Stillwater agreed. You never know. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael said I couldn't bring our stuff. Michael said I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do. So I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all of those things will fit. Let's see, Carl said. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. Hmm. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I will help you carry it home later. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do, Carl said. If you were here, I would climb up really high, and I would jump on him like this, and I'd do a big smash like this. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl, said Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. I'm sorry I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now you need to carry. Hold on tight and I will tell you a story. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. 
The rains had made deep puddles, and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there, looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman, said nothing, and walked by. The older monk quickly picked her up, put her on his back, transported her across the water, and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold a silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and you carried her. And then she didn't even thank you. I set that woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? Mm. A wise perspective, I think. Do you think you've carried it long enough? Asked Stillwater. Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. That, my friends, was Zen Shorts. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that book, and I look forward to speaking with you soon.